I'm taking a blood thinner. Do I need blood tests to see that the blood thinner is working appropriately in my bloodstream? Here's the answer. As always, on the bottom of the video, you'll be able to find chapters. You'll be able to skip to the segment that's interesting for you, or you can listen to the whole uh, video and learn all about this topic. Well, the first thing to know is that uh, there are various types of blood thinners. Not everybody receives the same type of blood thinner. Uh, another word for blood thinners is anticoagulants, and they come in many forms. Uh, most people will need a pill form, right? So a common type of blood thinner is Coumadin or Warfarin. It's been around for decades. Uh, Warfarin works through the liver. It inhibits various clotting factors, and by doing that, it thins your blood. The thing about Warfarin is that it interacts with all sorts of other medications, with things that we eat, and also with the bacteria in our uh, gut. So uh, the level of the effect of the Warfarin can really be variable over time. Another medication that requires monitoring is called heparin. Heparin is, has also been around for uh, many decades. It's a medication that is administered through the vein intravenously. Typically, people will receive it in the hospital. Different than warfarin coumadin, heparin is a short-acting medication that you can turn on and off quickly. Other than these medications, there are other pill form medications that do not require testing. Uh, examples of those are called Eliquis and Xeralto. Uh, other names for that is Apixaban and Rivaroxaban. Uh, other medications in, uh, that are similar to that are called Pradaxa, Dabigatran, and Sevisa and Doxaban. Now, different than Coumadin, these medications affect a particular molecule in the clotting sort of cascade in the way that we clot our blood. They have fewer interactions with other medications. They have fewer interactions with a food that we eat and with the bacteria in our gut. And for that reason, their effect is more predictable and more stable. When the companies that make these medications started kind of testing them, they tested their levels in volunteers and they realized that particular doses result in particular kind of predefined uh, blood thinning effects in these volunteers. That's how we know that a particular dose has a particular effect in, in any given patient. Now, many of us like to see the effect of a medication. So we take a blood pressure medicine, we like to see our blood pressure go down. We take a cholesterol medicine, we like to see our cholesterol go down. So with Coumadin Warfarin, we can test uh, with a special test called the INR. We know that if the INR is too high, the level of blood thinning is too strong. If the INR is too low, blood thinning is too weak. If the INR is within range, we know that we are where we need to be. With these other medications, we kind of need to trust the dose that has been tested, and we need to take the dose that has been prescribed for us, but we need to also trust the fact that there isn't a readily available blood test. Having said that, there are two things that can be done if we really do need to test for the presence of these medications. So first of all, if we need to, uh, if somebody asks us, is there any blood thinner in our bloodstream? So for example, let's say we need a surgical procedure. We need to know if there's any uh, blood uh, effect on our blood, effect on our blood thinning. We can actually do that uh, with very simple blood tests that are readily available in many hospitals. On the other hand, if we need to know the exact level of blood thinning, that's trickier. Some uh, hospitals, typically the more sort of advanced or the hospitals with more tools, will have uh, local testing that will be able to uh, check the level of effect of these medications in any person's bloodstream. Uh, but uh, both the test and the interpretation are tricky, and it's very difficult to kind of uh, translate the result from one hospital to another. So it's different than the INR, uh, and it's not as readily available. Still possible, just not as readily available. When will we need that? Well, if a person has a blood clot despite taking their blood thinner and we want to know that the blood thinner is acting properly, maybe in a person who's overweight and we want to make sure the dose that we're giving them is correct, those would be examples of when to use such blood tests. So that's what I had about blood testing for blood thinners. I hope you found this video uh, useful. Please do comment. These comments really help me understand what I, you want me to talk about, and I'd love to answer your questions. If you find the video useful, please consider subscribing to the channel, sharing the video, um, and as always, I'd love to see you uh, next time for the next video.